Hey there, it's Melina Dixon and this is episode two of our mini boot camp. And today's topic is hostess coaching, which I've gotta be honest, it's one of my least favorite things to do in my business, but it's absolutely necessary because y'all, <laughs> you are almost guaranteed to not have a successful party if you don't hostess coach. Like, I can't think of a single time that I've not hosted hostess coached and had an amazing party. So, we have to do it. But, what I'll also tell you is, you can do everything right. You can hostess coach the mess out of somebody. You can suggest your host do, you know, X, Y, and Z. They can do X, Y, and Z, and you can still end up with a womp womp party. It's going to happen. You got to play the numbers. They're not all going to be super amazing parties. But hostess coaching definitely increases the odds that your party will be a success. And everyone's definition of a success is different too. Any party where I walk away with some sales, I meet some new people, and I feel like I've got future business, that's a success to me. Okay, so I... Don't think I'm well known for saying this particular thing, but I thought of the most brilliant uh, phrase to help you think about your hostess coaching. So think of yourself as the conductor of a train. If you're the conductor of the train, you're driving that train and you know how to get to party town, but the passengers on board, AKA your hostesses, they might not know how to get to party town. So think of it that way. Um, you really do guide your hostess. You guys partner together for their party. But here's what I'm learning. Some consultants don't know the way to party town either. So it's super important that you, number one, watch finish watching this video because I'm going to share some stuff. Number two, make sure that you are consistently hostess coaching. Okay, so there's several different ways that you can coach your hostess. It can be face to face, face to face. It can be over the phone. It can be through text, through messenger. So what you really need to do is figure out what's the way that your host most like to communicate. And that's how you need to hostess coach with them. Yeah, sometimes I'll make videos for some of my Facebook parties. And those seem to be really helpful too because they're short, sweet, to the point, and people can watch them at their leisure. So I encourage you to put together a hostess packet for your hostesses if you're not already doing that. And there's, I mean, you can watch a million videos on YouTube and see what should go in a hostess packet, but I like to keep mine simple. Definitely include one or two catalogs. Um, I would include a little thank you card, thanking them for booking a party with you, letting them know how much fun you guys are gonna have. Include a few samples and order forms and let them know how to collect those orders for you. So I think it's helpful to put another document in there. It can be a hostess tic-tac-toe, a hostess bingo. Basically, it's a game for them, some challenges, and when they complete a certain amount, depending on if it's tic-tac-toe or bingo, then there's an extra prize in it for them. And you want to be strategic with those things. So things like getting two bookings, pre-selling before the party, having a $300 party, a $500 party, a $700 party. <laughs> you can put them all on there. Things like that. Activities that you want your host to do that you know will help the party be successful. Those are things you should include on your tic-tac-toe and on your bingo, whichever you decide to choose. All right, so just a little nugget that I feel like I need to say for Facebook parties. 50 people is the magic number. Let me say it again in um, super fast chipmunk voice. 50 people is the magic number. So you're definitely gonna wanna encourage your hostesses to only invite 50 people to their Facebook party. The big thing with Facebook parties is personally inviting your guest. Your host should be doing that for home parties too, but it's super critical for a Facebook party because it's so easy to just see a Facebook invitation, like a notification pop up on your phone and be like, Susie's having a blah, blah, blah party. And I'll be like, 
whatever. <laughs> Not because I don't love Susie, but we're busy people. So it's super important that your host actually reach out to the person and say, hey, I'm having a blah -bitty blah party. I know that you love blah -bitty blah I would love it if you could come and check out their newest products. Come hang out with me on Facebook. And I would be pretty likely <laughs> to click going instead of click can't go or ignore. Just saying. Okay, so another thing that you're gonna want your host to do for home parties and for online parties is send reminder messages. It's important for a home party, either a day or two before, for the host to remind her guest, um, you know, let them know, hey, we're starting at seven. I've got, um, you know, I'll have punch and brownies and whatever. My world famous, amazing dip that you don't gain weight when you eat, you know, whatever. Um, just to, to remind people about the party, get them excited. People will come for food. I'm serious. With a Facebook party. So we're fortunate that in a Facebook event, Facebook reminds everyone an hour before the party. And sometimes they'll even remind you the morning of. I've totally gotten a message before saying like, hey, you have a party tonight with so-and-so. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. But the host is also going to want to send those reminder messages too. Super important. And if you're partying in a Facebook event, you have the option to send a message through the event. I'm not going to get into all the technicalities of that. You can figure out how to do it yourself. But there is, if you go into a Facebook event, there is a message guest option. So your host can send a message to her friends and be like, hey, don't forget the party's tonight. Can't wait to hang out with you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> Another important thing for your host is for her to send thank you messages to her friends after the online party. Um, you should also be sending thank you messages to anyone who orders at that online party or that home party. Super important. A couple more things that you should do. I kind of touched on this one earlier, but challenge your host to collect pre-orders. I'd say $100 minimum before the party. Uh, that's worth a jar of sprinkles to me. <laughs> I would totally give the host a jar of sprinkles. You could give the host something else if you want. Um, it's totally your call, but you know, I try to be um, cost conscious and budget minded and all that stuff, but $100 in pre-orders, totally worth a jar of sprinkles to me. Um, I think you should also, whether it's a home party or a Facebook party, whichever, Ask your host to share her wish list with you. That's super important. For a home party, if you know what items the host is wishing for, you have the potential to bring those to the home party. You could be, um, if you have them, bring them and say, this is one of the things that's on Susie's wish list. So I'm so excited that we're going to help her earn it for free tonight. Um, with an online party, I like to get the host wish list because I usually will post that as one of my pre-party posts to kind of show people, hey, this is what Susie is wishing for. Like, check out how amazing her wish list is. And, you know, I don't know what else I would say, but something amazing. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool for her friends to know, like, kind of what she's, what she's wishing for too. All right, and so before we close, I we have to talk about what do you do if your host totally flakes out on you? Like, it could happen. Um, she could totally ghost you and you'd be like, are we still having this party or not? I have no idea. So, um, you know, I said earlier, figure out how your host likes to communicate. But what if she starts ignoring those messages? You know, if she says, message me on Facebook and then stops. <laughs> Well, hopefully you have another way to reach out to her because I, number one, encourage you to find another way to communicate with her. Is that a text message? Is it a quick phone call? Is it an email? We didn't talk about email earlier, but that's a way that you could communicate because maybe she's just busy or maybe she, you know, forgot to check her Facebook messages. Um, if you're doing an online party and your host just kind of disappears, um, I encourage you to move forward with the party anyways. If you're partying tag team style like I am, um, 
It's one post a day leading up to the party and five posts during party night. I'll totally do that even if my host doesn't show up. Um, I'll try really hard to make sure she shows up, but if she doesn't, I'm gonna move forward with the party because people may still show up and interact and place orders. And, you know, I still wanna take care of those customers. With a home party, if she starts to ghost you, oh gosh, been there, done that. Not with Pink Zebra, with my former direct sales company. It ain't pretty. I honestly would um, call them, you know, either the morning of the party or the day before and say, hey, I wanna confirm that we're on for tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Um, if I don't hear from you by five o'clock tomorrow, I'm gonna assume we are still good and I'm gonna pack up my car and head on over with all the Pink Zebra goodies. I promise you, they will call you or they will text you because they're not gonna want you showing up if they don't intend to actually hold that party. <laughs> Hopefully that never happens to you, but it's totally happened to me before. Not with Pink Zebra. Um, if your host flakes out on you, you know, the next thing you can do is cry. It's okay. Have a two second tear fest. People suck. Ah. Um, then you should eat a cookie. After you cry, eat your cookie and then put your big girl panties on and just know that one party does not make or break your business. It feels like it does sometimes, but it doesn't. So you just move forward. You do what you can um, based on the situation that you're in and you just move forward. And maybe if that person is an unreliable host, you don't let them host for you ever again. You can be like, no, you can't host for me. Remember? Remember when you deserted me and I had to cry and eat a cookie? You know? But anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I'd love it if you'd comment below and let me know what you liked. What was helpful? Was it all just crazy? Maybe. But hopefully you learned something, and I appreciate you guys. Hope you have a great, great night. Bye, friends.